is Brian Ray. So my Go name's ahead, Brian Ray. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Julie. My <laughs> name's Brian Ray. I uh, created and direct the Master Legal Studies in Cybersecurity and Data Privacy. Um, and I'm also the co-founder and director of the Center for Cybersecurity and Privacy Protection here at Cleveland Marshall College of Law. And uh, so in short, the program is, is my baby and, uh, and I try to take care of it that way and, and keep things going and make sure that, um, that all the faculty are, are happy and doing what they need to do and that the students uh, are getting what they need out of it and, um, and succeed in the program. And uh, I've really enjoyed doing it and we're, we're really excited to have, hopefully if we get the, the Zoom link worked out, uh, one of our first set of graduates, Elliot Burgos, um, a very successful professional who went through the program to tell us about her experience. But before we bring Elia on, um, Julie DiBiasso is going to tell you uh, a little bit about the, the program itself. Um, and for those of you who are interested, we are still enrolling uh, for the spring a cohort starting um, in a little bit before mid-January. And Julie can tell you a little bit more about what you what you need to do to get more information about the program and how to get uh, started in the application process. And so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Julie. And uh, Julie is my, my partner in crime. Together, we essentially run the program and Julie does everything uh, that I don't and many of the things that I probably should do uh, mm -hmm. as director of our graduate studies and professional development program. But we really hired her because of this program. Uh, and she does a great job making sure um, everything moves, uh, run smoothly and that students um, throughout their their career here, not just as they enroll, um, get what they need and and um, get sorted throughout the program. So I'll let you uh, give everyone a little bit of a, an overview of, of the process for applying, and especially if folks still want to get in for spring. Um, we, we enroll three cohorts a year, spring, summer, and fall. And as I said, there's still time to get in for the spring. So go ahead, Julie. Sure. Thank you so much, Brian, for that nice introduction. And as you said, yes, Brian and I, we do work very, very closely together um, to make sure that all your needs are met, whether you're a prospective student or a student who is in the program. But Brian, just as I started talking, I saw that Ilya has joined us. So I am promoting her to a panelist. Um, I can continue on, or if we just wanna start with our program um, with Ilya, which is why everyone is here. Um, I think that's probably best. And then um, I can pick up where we left off. What do you think? Yeah, perfect. Now that we got Ilya sorted, let's let's turn it over and um, I'll interview her about her experience in the program. And then we'll pivot back to you and you can tell everyone how they can um, find out more information and even get started as early as spring. That's All perfect. Right, so, so real quickly, though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the share um, of my screen. And if you and Elio were to turn on your videos, I think that'll make it a little bit more interactive. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Julie. Thank hey, you Elliot. guys. I'll come back Hi. in a little bit. So if you turn your video on, we'll start I'm, the conversation. I'm trying. Um, let's see if this works. It says you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Let me, so okay, I'm coming back. Let's see. Um, I'm just going to make you host to make this easy because that's the quickest way. All right. <laughs> You've been promoted, Elia. Oh my you God. should be able to start good. your video now. Let's see where I, where am I? Um, yes. Perfect. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Very festive. I like the, I like the holiday wreaths behind you. <laughs> Trying to get into the Christmas spirit, right? Yeah, it is that time of year. So, um, Elliot, you are are a set of among this, this this small but select group of folks who first made it through the program, and we're really excited to have you today and um, to hear more about your experience. But before we get into that, I just wanted to set the stage with your with your background. Um, and so, tell us um, what were you doing when you were considering the program and why why were you interested in this in this interesting combination of cybersecurity law policy and technology well, first of all thank you so much for inviting me i baby am very excited to to be here and share my experience with uh, prospective students um, my name is elia burgos i am from puerto rico 
but I've been living in Ohio and, and Cleveland for the past three years. Um, I moved to Ohio after Hurricane Maria to reunite with my husband, who's naturally from here, but was living down there in the, on the island. Um, and uh, when I moved to Ohio, I found out that I couldn't practice uh, my career, which was uh, being an attorney, until I, I took the bar. And um, situations happen, and that it, that deterred me from uh starting the process of uh, becoming an attorney here. And at some point I, I thought, do I wanna uh, keep doing what I was doing in Puerto Rico or should I pursue a career who will allow me a, a wider uh, net, uh, a wider net uh, in, in, in life and in my career. So uh, for some reason I, I call it the algorithms of life. <laughs> Um, I found a, uh, an, an advertisement about the degree in CSU and CSU, Cleveland Marshall College of Law has been so welcoming uh, to me because I, I tried to uh, start a, an LLM a few years ago and I got accepted, but I had to, to stop uh, the process because I was in Puerto Rico. So I, I felt that um, the way they treated me when I started that process in the beginning, how um, they allowed me to customize, or they uh, mentioned that I could customize my LLM in that moment, um, just draw me, drew me to to apply to the the MLS. And one of the reasons was because it was so convenient being uh, online. I, I currently, I, uh, I am the community outreach coordinator for the Latino community at the Board of Elections. Um, and I'm in the, com out in the community at odd hours, Saturdays. Uh, during the day, I work at the office. Sometimes during the, the week weeknights, I have to be out in the community. So I thought this is perfect because it's uh, completely online and I, could, I can do it on my own pace. Um, at some point when I was in Puerto Rico, we, we, the, I was a public defender. We don't, honestly don't have down there the, the preparation or the training to deal with uh, technical cases. And when we were confronted, when I was confronted with the first case of cyberbullying, I realized I don't know anything about how to present in evidence or what to even ask about uh, for to the uh, ask to the prosecutors to give me. So that that started uh, uh, making me uncomfortable. And when I finally got the, the chance uh, with this uh, specialized uh, masters, um, I just jumped into it and I I said I'm I'm gonna do it. Uh, it took me it took me a little bit of thinking, but Julie was so amazing in 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 helping me make sense on how versatile the, the program was to what I was doing right now and what I wanted to do in the future that at, at some point I said, this is it. So I, I, I enrolled and, and here I am, a recent graduate and I'm so excited and so proud. Yeah, well, we're, we're very proud of you and we'll get into that in, in a bit more. I just wanna tease out a few of the things that you mentioned. So you had a JD um, and legally qualified to practice. You just have to go through some hoops here in Ohio to, to translate that. Uh, but at the time you were working in professional in, in elections um, and as you said, community engagement, uh, which makes you a nice illustration of the varied backgrounds actually encapsulated in one person of folks who come to our program. And so although it is a master of legal studies and we have a set of core courses to prepare students with no legal background to get into the advanced legal courses, we also have a number of uh, folks like you who have um, the JD or other law degree. Um, and as you said, we give you the option either to take those two core um, law courses, which are in some cases a little bit of a refresher for people with a, with a law degree, uh, or to jump in into the more advanced law courses um, and start on the you know, combination of law and, and technology track. Um, and, and it's, you know, it's worked really well. It's, it's a nice configuration. And then for, you know, for folks who are in a professional role that are dealing with law or dealing with, with, with security, um, we give you the other side, um, you know, those other experiences. So, um, so you had, you know, you had some, some, some really specific things you had in mind coming in, uh, although you were in yourself kind of 
you know, I think deciding between whether to go down the legal path or stay in this, stay in, um, in, in the uh, elections area. Um, what'd, you, what'd you think of the program? Did you get out of it what you wanted? Yes, um, I th- in the beginning I was uh, worried if I was gonna be able to adapt. Um, I, I, before I moved here, I was an attorney for 16 years in Puerto Rico. So that means I went to the traditional JD school, um, going day to day to classes. So I didn't know if I was going to be able to adapt to the online um, uh, aspect of the, of the degree. But I mean, I think we were blessed in, 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 in a sense, because when we started the, the degree, a few months later, COVID uh, yeah. happened, and everybody was like scrambling to get their right. their their degrees or their classes online. But we were already, yeah. or you were already prepared for this because it was a it was it was designed uh, for a be an online uh, degree. And I love that it you have the app and. You go through the modules and the discussions are some sort. It, I, I, I compare it to being like a, um, a conversation board or a Facebook page where you uh, interact with your uh, uh, other st- with the other students and you in, uh, exchange uh, your different views because that's the that's the that's how it's designed. You have a, a, the question of the week. And you uh, expose your your opinion or, or or what's your your answer for the for the question, and then you have to reply to your students. So it's a, a it's a neat uh, conversation with them. Um, I have to say that I am more comfortable, probably ninety five percent more comfortable speaking about technical uh, terms of cybersecurity and privacy that I was when I started. Of course, I mean that's what you that's why you uh, enroll in a in a degree, but it, it the the change is in 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 the way I communicate and the way I see things now is so much different. So in a personal in a personal sense, from the beginning of the course, I started realizing how, all the things I was doing wrong with my secure cybersecurity uh, uh, the way I. I was using the same password for all my, for all my accounts. That's a big mistake. So from then, from then, from there, I started uh, migrating those uh, that knowledge to my uh, line of work. And right now, I am helping the IT department with cybersecurity awareness. Um, I am uh, constantly looking for the updates and this, uh, like this, for instance, this past week, there was a ransom, a new ransomware situation. So I immediately uh, let the IT department know because I work with social media in, in my, in, in, in the position I, I, I work currently, but I am also keeping an eye out for that, those sorts of situations, because of course we want our, our elections to be uh, safe. Uh, right. I also, um, we were doing, um, we're, we're acquiring new uh, voting equipment. So I had the chance to prepare the questionnaires to uh, uh, bet the vendors. And I were, was super proud of myself when I started seeing the videos and, uh, and the participations of these three vendors. And line by line were all the questions, all the questions that I uh, had in that and that questioner showed up on that on, on, on their presentation. So that means that what I learned, I could use right away. Um, and um, the professional networking uh, aspect of the degree, it's also a thing that I, I wasn't expecting to get it, but I am so uh, um, happy that, I, that it did because as part of the degree, Uh-oh. Um, now I have a relationship with, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. You just okay. lagged for a second. You're good. Okay. Um, as part of the, of the, um, of, of being a student in the master's of legal studies and cybersecurity and data privacy, I became a member of the YC's uh, women in cybersecurity. And I had the chance to go to their, um, um, conference in Denver, Colorado and, the exposure you get is amazing. I had so many people approach me, asking me about the degree, 
and also uh, in the conversations we had, I, I there is a, a, a lack of knowledge and how important law is with, within the, the cybersecurity and the privacy aspect. It's not about being technical. You have to follow guidelines and rules to keep your right. uh, business protected and your and your clients protected. So it, 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 it was all I was expecting and more. Excellent. So I want to follow up on several of the things you said there, but let's start with that last point. The, the degree, as we tell prospective students, is a 360 degree view of cybersecurity with an emphasis on law and policy because it is a master legal studies degree. But by design, there's also a, a fairly sophisticated technical element that's structured for folks like you of no technical background to get pretty deep pretty quickly, right? Uh, and that is one of the challenging pieces of it is for the folks with no legal and no technical background. Uh, we're essentially going to get you up to speed on both sides of that. And if you've got a little bit of legal or a little bit of technical, then you're going to you know, start with a little bit of an advantage uh, in that sense. But we get everyone there in the beginning. So talk about those two sides. And you mentioned how you've, you've used already the technical piece in your, in your work and you're advising the IT department, you're advising procurement. Uh, but how did you find that? You know, obviously, you had the legal background, but how did you find jumping in with no technical background and doing the technical work? Well, the first semester we got um, cybersecurity 101, cybersecurity one, and I think the other one was introduction to American law. That's right. We usually start with at least one of those courses because they're the foundation for each side. Yeah. Yeah. So for people who are more technical uh, oriented, maybe the the legal aspect is going to be a little bit of a shock, but. The fact that the uh, 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 professor Spence uses uh, what we learn on the on the um, legal uh, class in the uh, technical class is going to make it so much easier for for folks who are technically oriented and vice versa. Um, professor Spence, that first class, you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it so much because he is gonna help you he he hands hold you he on, honestly he's the most understanding professor and he helps you 100 percent of the way um he's very clear in, on the instructions because we are going to perform some uh white hat hacking on that first class and it is so cool uh i've never well i am i am of age i'm kind of old so the last time i coded was when i was i was i was doing code was when i was in high school back in the 80s and dos was was the 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 operating operating system and i honestly didn't touch a computer in that kind of way for wow 20 something years so you the 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 younger crowd are going to be more uh uh at ease with this, but even other people who are not technical as I as I would um, will 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 enjoy it uh, deeply. And also the second cybersecurity, cybersecurity two, you're going to be using more of the legal uh, uh, aspect of it when you're uh, uh, building this um, uh, risk assessment, and you have to come up with the with the uh, technical safeguards, the physical safeguards and the administrative safeguards of a complete uh, uh, scenario where you have to use HIPAA, where you have to use GLBA, all these uh, laws that uh, regulate different aspects of a, of a business. And it's, 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 it's fun and it's uh, very eye-opening how you, uh, uh, share with your uh, other with the other students who are technical, and you kind of build a, this team that will come up with this beautiful um, uh, homework where you have to build this this all these uh, programs uh, to to be all, not not only to safeguard the data but also to be cost efficient, and it's a hands on experience that you're right. gonna. Uh, use immediately at your workplace is honestly that marriage of technical and legal. It's both interesting and also it it feeds up each other, of of each other. So you're not gonna have too much. You're not gonna have uh, uh, too much trouble adapting to it if you are not technical or if you're not from a legal background. It's yeah, that's a great. That sorry to interrupt. That's a great point. And and just to 
to pull back for folks who aren't familiar with the program, the, the core courses are Introduction to American Law and Legal Writing, which you'll take sometime in the first couple semesters that give that legal grounding and Introduction to American Law. Both courses are, are taught with an emphasis on cybersecurity and data privacy issues. In fact, I teach the Intro to American Law course and um, the professor who teaches legal writing is an incident response lawyer uh, who uses materials from her practice. And then the cybersecurity sequence, the technical sequence, uh, Spence Witten is this phenomenal professional who did not grow up with a technical background, but is deeply technical uh, now, uh, teaches you cybersecurity one, uh, which uh, gives you, as, as LA mentioned, an opportunity to play around with some open source um, Kali Linux tools. CSU has an arrangement with us where we're basically uh, allowed to kind of hack at the at, at certain parts of the network with, within reason, uh, but you really get your hands you know, deep into uh, the dirt of technical cybersecurity. And then cybersecurity two goes back over the same core subjects, but now pulls more closely together the legal and technical by having you build the technical plan set of controls for um, an entity a lot like CSU, a large research university that has multiple compliance obligations. So you're not writing the legal plan. Uh, you get into that in privacy law and management where you get some experience on that side. Uh, you're writing the technical plan. So what the, you know, what the CISO and, and her team or his team is doing for, to comply as a matter of technical controls, administrative, physical safeguards, as Ellie mentioned. Um, and then there's the capstone uh, on the technical side, which again, Spence Witten created for us using Ohio's cyber range, uh, which maps slightly to what's called the Certified Ethical Hacker Certification. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about how we try to embed or connect with technical certifications. But um, that's a that you know that gives you a really nice sequence, which gets you pretty deep. That that Certified Ethical Hacker course, Elia. Um, is pretty much the same content um, that our, one of our advanced um, computer science graduate courses uh, uses. Uh, they use the exact same modules on the range. Uh, and although they spend a little more time in the technical stuff, uh, this functional substance is pretty much the same, which is pretty amazing that we get folks who are not CS students at all with no technical background to that level um, by the end. So let me follow up then real quick on, on the online aspect of it. Um, as you mentioned, we are primarily asynchronous from the courses, although we do embed this um, three or four, usually four live optional, but, but highly encouraged sessions so that oh, there's yes. an opportunity for everyone to interact. But how did you find that getting, did, did you get to know your colleagues? Did you get to know the professors in spite of the fact that it was, it's not totally self-paced, you have to finish the modules each week, but outside of that, it's self-paced and asynchronous. Well, I don't think I missed one live class. I still that's that that the live class still give me a, like a, a a sense of the traditional traditional teaching methods that I am accustomed or, or grew accustomed to. Um, so they are optional, but highly encouraged. You get to learn so much from the professors. Ask questions about what you couldn't understand from the from the lectures. I did get to know my. Um, my the other students uh one of them live here in uh in lives here in ohio um actually really close to where i used to live and on that second the cybersecurity uh two we we were doing a a, a group assignment so we met and and, and we work on it because he's more technically or technical oriented he used to do it for progressive and during the during uh our degree he went on to uh, get a job at uh, the Federal Reserve Bank, and I'm sure that the master helped him get that job. He's very happy. Um, and then Talita, which is from Brazil, uh, but was living in New Jersey. Uh, I, get, I got to know her too. We still keep in contact. And when you are, when you are uh, participating on, um, on the discussions, you get to see and, and pick their mind and, and see what other people think. And Talita is, is an attorney, but she is um, form in Brazil. So she can't uh, uh, practice up here. And there were two attorneys and then Carlos, who was the, the technical one. And I love to uh, read what he, the, 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 his answers to the questions because they, he, saw things so differently because of his right. technical background. So you not only learn from, this, 
from professor, but you also learn from your students. Um, one of the things that I love about the, the way the program is structured is the, the lectures. Uh, you can listen to them while you're going driving to your work and your commute, or I used to do it when I was uh, on my uh, lunch walk. And it's so easy. And another thing is that um, it's, for me, I found it was a very, uh, um, the, 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 the degree is conscious about uh, the material they give you. You don't have to invest that much in books because professors are giving right. you the, the material through the lectures, through the readings. Uh, my, my investment in books was minimal. Uh, compared to to other degrees, so I appreciate that from the program. Um, but the, yeah, and we still we're still in contact uh, with the with the other groups, and it was a, it, I didn't miss the traditional experience because yeah. the, the degree gave it to me. Yeah, yeah, and this was my first experience uh, teaching online. As you mentioned, it helped prepare me for the shift to COVID. <laughs> I was yeah. the go-to expert within the law school. Uh, and I was, I was, that was one part I was worried about is, well, how are we going to create that kind of community? And as you say, the, the weekly discussion boards in some ways allow you to get to know your colleagues um, even better than in a live setting in the sense that, you know, to write something down requires some thought. And so seeing what people write on a mm -hmm. consistent basis, which you don't get in a live class. Uh, gives you a different insight into who they are. Uh, as you said, it's kind of like good Facebook friends, right? Mm -hmm. You get to see and get to exactly. get a sense for who they are because you're sort of seeing their style of both their initial posts and the comments. And um, and then the live class augment that. And of course, for folks who are local or who are regionally close to other students, it's, it, they're, you know, they're obviously incentives sometimes and opportunities to get together. But, um, you know, all in all, I think it's, um, you know, there, there are elements of it that I'm bringing into my, well, during COVID semi-live classes uh, because of the benefits uh, of that intensity of interaction. I agree. I think it's, um, you know, it's always nice to hang out with people. Um, but, and we, and we do try to provide those opportunities in a non-COVID world through the center's uh, events and we will continue to do that. Uh, but it's also, you know, great to see, you know, how people think and write. So um, you're one of our most distinguished students in the first cohort. Uh, you already mentioned that you were selected uh, in a competitive process to, to, to go fully funded to the Women in Cybersecurity Conference that we're hosting actually this spring will be the, the national host for it. Uh, that's CSU you know, at large. And that's one of the other benefits of being in this program is you're not just in this program. You have access to all of the opportunities that all the students across campus, because we're an interdisciplinary center, uh, this is actually an engineering uh, program that, that although our, my center helped land it, uh, it's really being driven by the engineering college. Um, but I said, hey, I've got students who are interested and we were able to send uh, you and actually Talita had the opportunity, but she wasn't able to do it. And, she was um, and also more directly in our bailiwick, as you mentioned, um, you know, we try to connect with the relevant professional societies in the International mm -hmm. Association of Privacy Professionals, which is the leading um, professional group in privacy and straddles lawyers, compliance professionals, technologists. So it's a perfect fit for us. Uh, recently made us, while you were in the program, one of about 30 uh, universities that participated in the Weston Scholar Program. Uh, and then you also received a competitive scholarship to learn about a very specific AI tool from uh, um, from Brain another space. one of our, uh, right, offered through one of our partners, um, that is one of the major national recruiting firms um, in this space. So, but tell us a little bit about IPP uh, and, and becoming Weston Scholar and, and what that meant. So uh, when, when, I, when we started the degree, we, the, the school didn't have that, uh, that opportunity because I think it, you needed to teach cybersecurity and privacy for a certain period of time. But then when uh, we started taking the uh, privacy management course, um, you announced at the beginning of the year that we, you were in, in conversations with AIPP to uh, become, um, uh, have a partnership. Uh, and this is one of the, the instances where uh, keeping up to date with your schoolwork, participating in uh, the live classes, and obviously completing your, your weekly homework paid off. 
at the end of the year, um, you announced that I was uh, in the running to uh, the becoming a Westing scholar and that I had to submit a, an essay, a short essay on uh, why I wanted to uh, pursue privacy. When I first started as an attorney, I had a, a, a short uh, period of time where I was working uh, for a, a health uh, law firm and I had the chance to uh, uh, you know, deal a little bit with, with privacy. But when I started taking the course and the, and the degree, I realized how much of our uh, data we are sharing daily and we need to be a little bit more conscious about that. So I uh, submitted my, um, my essay and happily I got the nomination, the Westing Scholar Award um, there is obviously a, a, a money, uh, uh, a monetary award, but it's not only that. It's now I have the chance to pursue three certifications that are, uh, you know, of a, a certain monetary value that probably I wouldn't have been able to do it in a long time. So the uh, Certified uh, Information Privacy Professional, CIPP, uh, the Certified Information Privacy Manager, and also the one that deals with the European law, GDPR, which I've said to so many people, it doesn't matter if it's in Europe, the, the, the yeah. characteristic of internet, it's, it's international. You are here, but you are dealing and doing business with Europe and Asia and everywhere. So you have to learn about, uh, about everything. It's, it's, it's worldwide. So now I have the chance to get those certifications and also um, have access to their newsletters and the professional meetings, webinars. Um, so even if you don't get the, the award, work for it because you, you, it, it's a, a very good benefit and, and a very prestigious, prestigious award. But even if you don't get to get the award, just become a member because it has other uh, um, uh, benefits. Uh, you, you get a new, privacy law and cybersecurity law, it's changing every day and you get those updates just right into your inbox so you don't have to miss anything. Um, also the, the WISIS, the Women in Cybersecurity um, Connection helped me greatly. Um, you, we, when we were there, we met so many people, they had this, uh, um, uh, employment village where we were able to talk to Amazon, uh, e EY, um, lots of uh, uh, MasterCard that that it will give you the opportunity and the, the first uh, seat row to uh, this uh, very big corporations that are looking for, for employees. And if you have your technical background and then you have the legal aspect of it, you're going to be a very, very good candidate. Um, with uh, WESIS, you also get the chance to get your uh, pictures taken for your professional uh, uh, file and also um, your resume. And knowing and having the chance to talk to this, uh, people are so important in the cybersecurity realm. It's just uh, a, a, a big deal. It's a big opportunity. Um, with the brain space uh, um, award, it was funny because I I I participated like at the end of the uh, the the deadline, and I put up the the essay really quickly. But I spoke honestly from my heart. I have no knowledge of this, and I want to be better. So now I have access to a, an artificial intelligence uh, app where I can help whomever hires me to process big, big amounts of that data and know exactly where the data is. This is something you're gonna learn in uh, uh, Professor Ray's uh, um, uh, course, the uh, privacy management. It's the big deal to know where is your data so you can comply with uh, regulatory aspects such as uh, HIPAA and uh, GLBA and all this uh, big federal laws that you're gonna learn from. So. It's not only about getting a degree, it's what you will carry from it, uh, all the professional awards and certifications and, and, and knowing 
uh, where to go to get those certifications that will uh, expand your your degree and your knowledge. Yeah, and and just to to amplify that a little bit, um, so the privacy law and management course, which is another one of the core courses on the legal side, it's taught by uh, Kirk Harris, who you mentioned. Kirk recently retired as chief privacy officer of Nationwide Insurance, and was one of the leaders in creating the International Association of Privacy Professionals, IPP. Um, it's really thanks to him that we got connected. Um, and we're trying to actually extend that partnership so that we can get discounted certifications um, for all students. Uh, but the Weston Scholar Program comes with three free certifications for the student wins at $1,000 a book and recognition nationally, uh, which is great. And then that brain space, um, uh, very specific tool, as you mentioned, that's often used in, in, um, in uh, data governance in e-discovery comes from another one of our partners, which is a placement, like I said, a national placement firm that hosts a national competition every year for multiple certifications, including one IPP. And, and LA was selected in a national competition, uh, the only one from Cleveland Marshall. And I think there were maybe 10 or a dozen total. Um, so you did really well. You went out and we, I mean, we, as you say, we try to provide these opportunities, which is one of the ways that makes us distinctive among online programs. You're not just, you know, getting the knowledge, which you'll get uh, in many programs, but we really do try to replicate as much as possible the experience of being part of the community. And as we're as we're demonstrating now, we brought you back and, and you're actually doing some some work for us, which we're great yes. for on our blog. Uh, we try to, you know, we try to keep track of folks uh, throughout. So um, we're getting right up on the, the top of the 45 minutes we wanted to spend. And um, just closing thoughts. Uh, we're going to share this with folks who are thinking about the program. Um, what would you say to them? If you're thinking about the program, you're on the fence. Honestly, don't think too much about it. I thought so much about it and I almost missed the deadline. But speak to Julie. Julie is going to help you figure out uh, how to make the best uh, uh, of the degree. I uh, When I told her, oh, I work on elections and she's like, well, that's the hot topic right now, cybersecurity and elections. And as she said, I've, I've, been, I've been using and taking advantage of, the, of that degree in, in my current uh, job. Um, and also beyond, I'm going to be uh, changing careers as soon as I take my, um, as soon as I take the bar. And not even that. With the certifications, I, I think I'll, I'll be set for a good job with a with uh, any company uh, before I even get the bar. So don't think about it too much. Uh, it's a good investment. As I mentioned uh, in your personal life, you're gonna uh, take advantage of it, protecting your, your home network and also uh, uh, securing a good job, uh, maybe even uh, ascending in your current job. Who doesn't wanna have someone who knows about the legal aspect and how to get uh, uh, stay out of trouble with the with the regulatory agencies. Uh, so if you have that advantage uh, and that degree, you if you have the degree, you'll have the advantage. And as I mentioned before, it's an investment, but it's not an overburdening investment in your finances because it's it's uh, it it won't make you spend too much money in books. Um, so don't think about it. Just uh, Take the, take the dive and, and in the, the best thing is that you'll have a degree in 18 months. At the beginning, I thought I was gonna be doing this for the next three years. And lo and behold, 18 months later, the professor tells us you, you get, you're graduating in August, you're, you finish in August. So I, I was uh, very satisfied and I do not regret for one moment. Uh, uh, taking the degree and, and taking the plunge and, and, and finishing my degree. That's always a good thing to, to add to your, to your resume. Well, thanks so much, Elliot. Really been a pleasure catching up with you and my pleasure. hearing about your experience. And that's a perfect segue. We're going to hand it back to Julie, um, who can help anyone who's interested in uh, learning more about the program, or even if you're interested and uh, eager to get started right away, we, we still have time. Um, and we'll let Julie tell you more about that. Julie, back to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ilya, for the such nice words and, and kind words that you said. It, it's been such a pleasure to work with you from a prospective student to now. It's so great to see how far you've come, and I can't wait to see what you can do more so in your future. You're definitely going to be someone to watch and be very successful. So thank again, you. thank you. It's just been such a pleasure. 
Um, I'm going to share my screen again real quickly and just to pull up our contact information and just talk, like I said, real quickly about next steps. Um, just give me one second as I get to that slide. Um, but we are still accepting applications for spring 2022. The application deadline is December 27th. So you have about a week. Um, and the session starts the week of January 10th. So if you're ready to get started, why wait? You heard a great success story from Ilya. So I, I think better now um, than later. Um, so we and really, yeah, please, Brian. Julie, just to, so our, our app deadlines on the left says December 14th. That was our original deadline, but we have extended it. Uh, don't be confused. The oh, in the in you. the text is the twenty. No, not at all. I just want to make sure for folks watching the video, the twenty seventh. You aren't too late. And for that matter, we're flexible. If folks, you know, are are, are really interested and you haven't um, quite made that deadline, just contact us as soon as possible, and we'll try to make it work for you. Yeah, like Brian said, we are super flexible. And I'm sorry, so I do want to reiterate that one more time. It's December twenty seventh, so you have plenty of time, and we can of course be more flexible then December 7th. Um, the application process is really simple. Um, just go to our website, onlinelaw.csuohio.edu, and it'll tell you detailed exactly what you need for the application. But most importantly, myself and Brian are here to walk you through that. So please do not hesitate to contact me. Um, this email address, even though it looks like a standard Email comes directly to my personal email as well as Brian's. That is my phone number. I encourage you to contact me. I'd love to sit down, understand a little bit more about your background and together we can decide if this program is a good fit. And if it is, we can go through the application process together. Um, but that's all I have for you guys. Brian, is there anything else you'd like to mention? That's it. Uh if, if uh, the folks on the line have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them before we roll off. But otherwise, um, please follow up with us. All right, so I think right. we're good. Elliot, thanks again. Julie, thank you. And uh, look forward to hearing from folks. Thank you both and happy holidays. Yes. Bye everyone. Bye, thank you. Thank you, Elliot.